Andy Green was horribly abused by his father and grandfather for many years. His father was abusive in ways no human could ever imagine. At the age of six Ricky Lee Green's father Bill Green forced his son to run from the porch where his father sat with a BB gun. At the count of ten he was told to run while his father shot at him hitting him with the small metal BBs. The six-year-old tried to outrun the BBs but it was no use he was hit every time. The only comment he ever heard from his father was maybe you better learn to run faster. This is only one example of his lifelong abuse by his father. There were other kinds of abuse that he endured like beatings, verbal abuse, and sexual abuse. From the time he was born all Ricky Green never remembered hearing from his father was how he was no good and never would be. Ricky Green on several occasions in his childhood was sent to stay with his grandfather who sexually sodomized him time after time. Ricky could never understand if they were supposed to love him why they always hurt him. On February 18, 1984 Ricky married Mary Frances. Ricky felt that she was the closest he had to a normal family. Their relationship was based solely on sex. Their marriage started to deteriorate after only two months. Ricky suspected that Mary sought sexual satisfaction from others. Ricky was very unhappy. He drank a lot and drove around to escape reality. One night when Mary got home from work Ricky was sitting in the living room heavily drinking. He pulled a knife on her and raped her. When he passed out she grabbed her belongings and left never to return. A couple of weeks later Ricky met a woman by the name of Sharon Dollar. Their first night together was all sex and booze. Three days after Ricky and Sharon were together she asked him to move in with her and he said yes. Although Ricky was happier with Sharon than he had ever been in his life his drinking steadily increased. One night in the middle of hot passionate sex Sharon pricked Ricky's penis with a needle longing for the taste of blood. Ricky at first objected to the pain, but it was too late she was already sucking the blood from his penis relieving his pain. This was the first time Ricky noticed Sharon's pleasure for blood. The first victim of Ricky was a teen by the name of Jeffrey Davis. Ricky had met Davis before and invited him to hang out with him since Sharon was out of town. The two went driving around. Ricky made a stop to urinate. When he returned he found Davis in the passenger seat masturbating. Davis asked Ricky if he'd like to touch him and Ricky got mad and beat Davis. They continued to drive around and the more Davis complained the more Ricky beat him until finally Ricky pulled over to a secluded area and dragged Davis out of the car beating him and mutilating Davis with a knife. Ricky killed Davis and proceeded to cut off his penis and toss it into the nearby lake. He then disposed of the body in a secluded area nearby. On September 20, 1980 Ricky and Sharon Dollar married. The next victim was for the sexual pleasure of now husband and wife Ricky and Sharon Green. Ricky was driving along the road when he spotted a woman hitchhiking. He pulled over to give her a ride. The woman stuck her head in the window and said her name was Montana. Ricky asked her if she would like to take a shower and get cleaned up. She agreed and they went back to his house. As Montana was taking a shower he went into the bathroom and opened the shower curtain and asked her if he could join. The two had sex in the shower and it continued on into the bedroom. He then told her it was time to pick up his wife from work. When he arrived to pick up Sharon she was surprised to see a woman in the car. When they got back to the house Ricky propositioned Sharon with the idea that all three have sex. They agreed and went into the bedroom. When Sharon appeared naked at the doorway Montana changed her mind, but it was too late the two already had their minds set. Ricky and Sharon tied Montana to the bed. Montana kicked and screamed. The two soon tired of her and drug her to the bathroom where Ricky tried to sodomize Montana. 
Sharon went to the kitchen to retrieve a knife. Without warning Sharon thrust the knife into Montana. Ricky went into the bedroom to get his pocket knife. When he returned he saw Montana try to get up so he stabbed her again and again. Ricky again left to get a large hammer. He then bashed her head in three or four times. Sharon wanted to try it also so she then to hit Montana in the head. Montana was dead and they just stood there looking at what they had done. With the dead corpse lying there and blood all over the walls Ricky leaned over and started to fondle Sharon's breast. Sharon immediately got turned on and Sharon and Ricky had the most powerful sex in the blood of their victim. Afterwards they proceeded to clean the bathroom and load the corpse into the trunk of their car to dispose of the body. They took her to a secluded area and dumped her. Ricky's next victim was a woman by the name of Sandra Bailey. He met her at a club he frequented. He took her back to his house where his wife was waiting. When Sandra saw Ricky's wife she wanted to go home. The two tied her up and proceeded to carry out the same scenario they did with Montana. The only thought the two had afterwards was that the sex was not as powerful as it was the first time. They took the body and disposed of it in the same fashion they did Montana. Ricky's final victim was a man by the name of Stephen Pfefferman. Ricky met Fieferman in a parking lot frequented by homosexuals. Ricky agreed to go back to Stephen's home with him. When they arrived Stephen started to fondle Ricky in the living room. Stephen excused himself to take a shower. When he returned he found Ricky in the bedroom. Ricky asked Stephen if he could tie him up and each would take a turn at being tied up. After Ricky tied up Stephen he pulled out a knife and started to tell Stephen that he hated homosexuals. He then proceeded to stab him with the knife again and again. Stephen was still alive after the stabbings and Ricky went into the kitchen and got a kitchen knife and stabbed Stephen in his throat all the time repeating that he hated homosexuals. He then proceeded to cut open Stephen from sternum to scrotum. Stephen was still alive gasping for air. Ricky's last horrific blow came when he cut off Stephen's penis and shoved it into his mouth to quit his moans. Ricky then riffled through Stephen's things taking some money and fleeing the scene. Ricky returned home and told his wife what he had done. She quieted him and told him everything was going to be okay. Their marriage seemed to go downhill following the murders. The both of them drank heavily and started using drugs. A few years later Sharon packed her things and left. Ricky never heard from Sharon much after she left. One night Ricky's house was surrounded by police and he was arrested for capital murder for the death of Stephen Pfefferman. Ricky knew the day would come but he never knew it would be at the hands of Sharon the wife he loved. Ricky was sentenced to death by lethal injection for the murder of Stephen Pfefferman. He got three life sentences, one for each murder. Sharon Green only got ten years probation for her part in the crimes. Love is a feeling no one can describe but is love worth all this? After Green was sentenced for the murder of Pfefferman, he was tried for two other murders and given life sentences for each. Green was suspected in at least 12 other murder cases throughout the state of Texas. He left his mark all over the state. Serial killer Ricky Lee Green, 36, was pronounced dead on October 9, 1997, after being lethally injected by prison authorities in Huntsville, Texas. Now we can go on and not have to worry about him getting out and hurting anyone else, said Shirley Bailey the sister of one of his known victims. Speaking quietly and slowly, Green turned to four relatives of his victims and said he was sorry. This to me is another killing and it's not going to solve nothing. I feel my punishment is over and now my friends and family are being punished. Executioners had trouble finding a suitable vein, thanks to Ricky's fondness for intravenous drugs. 
Before dying the convicted killer reminded onlookers that he had been a model prisoner while on death row. The one-eyed radiator repairman was condemned to death for the December 27, 1986, murder of Stephen Pfefferman, an advertising executive for a Fort Worth television station. Pfefferman, 28, was castrated and repeatedly stabbed with a butcher knife at his home after having sex with Green. In his final statement, Green thanked the Lord above and noted that he had been in prison for eight years and caused no trouble. I feel I'm not a threat to society no more, he said, speaking quietly and slowly. I feel my punishment is over and now my friends and family are being punished. Turning to four relatives of his victims, who watched through a window a few feet away, Green said he was really sorry. But this to me is another killing, and it's not going to solve nothing. As the lethal solution took effect, he gasped several times before he stopped breathing. Only one needle was used on Mr. Green instead of the customary two. Prison officials were unable to locate a suitable vein in the left arm of the longtime drug user. Thank you for watching Death Row.